Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to show you the absolute easiest possible way to make live cultured buttermilk at home. Having live cultured buttermilk at home makes for an incredible ingredient. I mean, for starters, it's loaded with beneficial bacteria. So if you just drink it, it would be good for you. But live cultured buttermilk acts as a mesophilic culture in cheese making. So you could use your live active culture buttermilk and make any cheese that requires a mesophilic culture. Cheeses like feta, blue, brie, camembert, chev, fromage blanc, I mean, just to name a few. You can also use live culture buttermilk in your baking. Cakes, buttermilk biscuits, pancakes, waffles, make an awesome sourdough bread with live cultured buttermilk, and you can use it as an incredible tenderizer. We'll often marinate chicken, beef, or pork in live cultured buttermilk overnight to produce a juicy, juicy tender bite. So there are lots of uses for live cultured buttermilk, and so I'm gonna show you right now how to make it at home. This thing is absolutely crazy easy. All right, and so before we begin, I just wanna say one tiny little thing to avoid any confusion, actual real buttermilk is the byproduct of making butter. Now that's not an easy process, and there's really no way to make that an easy process. I mean, you have to take raw milk, you have to separate the cream from the milk, and then you have to separate the milk solids from the fat solids, and what you're left with is butter on one side and then butter milk on the other side. Now, because that comes from raw cow's milk, that buttermilk is usually loaded with beneficial bacteria as well, and that's where buttermilk originally came from. Well, and so what we're gonna be making today is cultured milk, and that's what's most commonly referred to today as buttermilk, and we're gonna be adding bacteria, to milk and it's gonna give us the nice acidity, it's gonna give us that yogurt-like consistency, it's also gonna give us a flavor that's got very subtle buttery notes, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. So let me show you how to make buttermilk the easiest possible way. The first thing you're gonna need is some milk. Now I'm gonna be using a gallon of milk. You don't have to use a gallon, you could use a half a gallon or a quart if you really want. We make a lot of buttermilk at a time. The cool thing about buttermilk is that if you get to the point where you feel like you're not gonna use it all, you can freeze it and then use it later. This makes an excellent ingredient in soap making. It gives you a great, beautiful lather. If you're into soap making, buttermilk is amazing. So I haven't even opened it, and this literally just came out of my refrigerator. So it's very cold, and we're just gonna set this to the side. The other thing you're gonna need to make buttermilk is a buttermilk starter culture. Now this particular starter culture comes from the New England Cheese Making Supply Company, and if you happen to buy a pack of buttermilk starter culture, you're gonna get five individual packs within it, and you just wanna make sure that you store it in the freezer. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below if you want more information on the buttermilk starter culture. I've been using this culture for the past six years to make buttermilk, and I like it because the collection of bacteria that we're gonna be adding are gonna give it a very nice, thick, yogurt-like consistency with buttery undertones. And so it's a very, very delicious buttermilk. As far as the directions go on the pack, it says, heat one quart of pasteurized milk to 86 Fahrenheit. Pour into a thermos-like container or yogurt therm. Add one pack, let rehydrate for two minutes, then stir, cover, and let sit. Okay, so already that's way too complicated. Let me show you how we're gonna do this, right? So let me just tell you, I haven't opened up my milk, it's brand new. It literally just came out of the refrigerator and I've got one pack of this buttermilk starter culture. All we're gonna do is open up this milk and it's very cold. I mean, it literally just came outside of the refrigerator and I've got my starter culture right here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up this starter culture and I'm just gonna pour that right in there. That's it. So once we add the starter culture to the milk, I'm gonna go ahead and close that off, all right? Now that it's closed, we're gonna give that a shake. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've given it a little shake. It's got our starter culture in there, and I'm gonna open it up just a quarter turn to let it breathe, and that is it. This is gonna sit on our counter for anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. And so tomorrow, after about 12 or 24 hours, I'm gonna show you what your milk is gonna look like once it's ready. But until then, this newly opened gallon of milk that just came out of my refrigerator, so it's probably 43, 44 degrees Fahrenheit right now, 
in which we added one pack of starter culture to is just going to sit on my counter undisturbed. I'll see you tomorrow. Our milk has now been sitting on the counter exactly where we left it for about 16 hours. Uh, this is the warmest room in our kitchen. And just to let you know, if you have a relatively warm kitchen, this process happens a little faster. If you have a relatively cool kitchen, this process happens a little bit slower. But that's why we say anywhere between 12 to 24 hours. Let me now open this up and show you exactly what your buttermilk is going to look like when it's ready. So here we go. Okay, you'll notice as soon as it's opened up that it's going to have like the consistency of a soft yogurt. If you tilt your container to the side, it's no longer liquid like a milk is and it pulls away from the edge very easy. So let me just pour some into a glass so that you can see what I'm talking about. See that? See how nice and thick that is? There we go, this is our buttermilk. And that's exactly what it's supposed to look like at this point, like a very soft yogurt. All right, so let's just go ahead and give this a little taste. All right, well, here is our freshly made cultured buttermilk. And I got to tell you, this looks great. It's thickened up a little bit over the night. And now that we know it's ready, let's give it a smell. It smells great. I mean, it has a slight cultured smell like a, like a mild yogurt. And uh, that's exactly how it's supposed to smell. So now let's give it a taste. Mmm. It's beautiful. Slightly acidic, which is characteristic of buttermilk and why it's so great in some of your baking recipes. And it's got these wonderful, wonderful buttery notes. So now that you know how to make buttermilk from a starter culture, let me show you how to make buttermilk using live culture buttermilk. You see, once you've made live culture buttermilk and you have active bacteria in this buttermilk, this is all you need to continue propagating buttermilk. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come back to you when this gallon is almost empty. And for me, that happens pretty quick. And then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. See you in a bit. Okay, we're now back. Our buttermilk container is just about empty. And I'm not sure how much we have in there left. It doesn't look like much. Let me just go ahead and pour some out. And the trick to continually making buttermilk is that you always wanna save just a little bit from the previous batch. And so it looks like we have about a cup left. That's absolutely perfect. We're just gonna set that to the side as I grab some milk from my refrigerator. So let me just grab a quick jug and notice this one's already open. And so, you know, like I said in the beginning, the amount of milk that you start off with is mostly irrelevant. You could use a cup, a, a pint, a gallon, a quart, it doesn't matter. But I do wanna take the temperature of this just to show you what we're working with. You certainly don't have to take the temperature. As I said, this just came out of my fridge. We're at 41.5. This is great, all I'm gonna do is put a funnel on top of that gallon so I don't spill it everywhere. And then just go ahead and pour that live cultured buttermilk into that fresh milk. And that's it. Now basically what we're doing is adding a lot of bacteria. I'm gonna cover it up just like we did in the first segment, give it a little shake and you are done. It is literally as easy as that. We're now gonna leave this in our kitchen, ideally the most warm spot in your kitchen. 70 degrees Fahrenheit or higher would be better. And just let it hang out there for 12 to 24 hours. Let me show you what this looks like roughly 15 hours later. All right, well, here's our milk the next day and it's thickened up exactly as it's supposed to. Let's just go ahead and open it up and pour a glass. See that, nice and thick. Oh, doesn't that look nice? This is exactly what your buttermilk should look like. And let's go ahead and give it a taste. All right, well, here's our fresh batch of buttermilk using only a cup from our previous batch. And I gotta tell you, this looks great. It's nice and thick. It smells wonderful, exactly as a buttermilk should. Let's just give it a quick taste. Mm. A little tangy, it's got really nice acidity, very nice buttery notes, absolutely delicious. And now you know how to make an endless supply of buttermilk just by saving a little bit from your previous batch and adding it to fresh milk. 
One little tip when it comes to making an endless supply of buttermilk is not to wait too long between the times that you make it. As a rule of thumb, I try to make a fresh batch once a week, and it doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, it could be as little as a cup of fresh buttermilk. And the reason you wanna do it at least once a week is because you're constantly replenishing the food for your bacteria. This is gonna keep them alive, keep them strong, keep them healthy, keep them happy. If you wait too long between the batches, the bacteria could get a little slow, a little sluggish, and uh, not produce as well as they did. So if you commit to making buttermilk using a little bit of starter from your previous batch at least once a week, you will never have to buy buttermilk again. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you're new to our channel, we'd like to say welcome. Consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. We post new videos each week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Mm. Delicious. Mm.